This is WYMT Mountain Sports, your home for the Kentucky Wildcats and local high school sports. While a lot of talk about Kentucky's defense this season is centering around the youth, one bright spot in the Wildcats season opener came from a seasoned veteran. Senior cornerback J.D. Harmon played very well for Kentucky, recording six tackles, forcing a fumble, and intercepting a pass. Head coach Mark Stoops says he worked hard in the offseason to earn back the trust of the coaching staff. I'm pleased with him. I said that in post game as well. The fact that uh, he earned some trust and some uh, some of our confidence throughout uh, camp because he had been practicing better and playing better and uh, more disciplined in his approach, and that that showed up. You know, again, he's not perfect. He made a few bad plays, but he but he helped uh, contribute to the win as well, and uh, that I am proud of from him. One question for Louisville entering the season was its quarterback play. Who would start week one? Kyle Bolin, Reggie Bonifon, Will Gardner, and Lamar Jackson battled during the summer for the job, with Bonifon getting the start against Auburn last weekend. Head coach Bobby Petrino said the decision came down to simply which QB matched up better with Auburn's defensive scheme. The other guys competed hard. They played extremely well. You know, I still like what Kyle Bolin did all fall. Um, Will actually tweaked his, his ribs a little bit, um, cartilage in his ribs, and didn't throw a lot the last week. So he was never really an option for the game. And then Reggie had good preparation for the game, so we kind of judged it on. We were going to need to be mobile because they have a big uh, physical defensive front, and we want, went with experience on the call to start Reggie. The U Pipe Bears are one and one in heading into their third game of the season and second home game of the year on Saturday. A point of emphasis for head coach Al Holland Jr. and the Bears was improvement on defense and special teams, and both have shined through the first two games. Even in their loss to Campbell, a Pioneer League team, Coach Holland was pleased with those two sides of the ball and is confident the offense will click come this weekend. We're hanging our hat on our special teams, you know, and uh, it's putting us in great field position, giving us opportunities to be able to score. Uh, you know, offensively, we're a little behind in where we normally are. But, uh, you know, you got a lot of new faces, some new guys at wide receivers, some new guys up front. So, you know, just trying to get that new mix and, and them guys mixing together. Um, but, you know, they're doing a great job, continuing to get better, and uh, we got to continue to work, and we got a tough one this week. Both Betsy Lane and McGoffin County are winless heading into this week's Appalachian Wireless Game of the Week. Lauren Cash tells us how both head coaches are dealing with youth and inexperience through the first three games of the season. Week three of the high school football season, our Appalachian Wireless Game of the Week crew is heading to Salyersville. Both Betsy Lane and McGoffin County are rebuilding after losing key parts of their offense and defense to graduation. You know, I, I think we're fairly even, uh, evenly matched. You know, both clubs lost a lot of off last year's team. Um, you know, young and inexperienced. Um, so I, I do see a, a mirror-like image of each other. For the Bobcats, less than 5% of their offense returns off last season's squad. For the Hornets, they lost their dual-threat quarterback who posted more than 1,400 passing yards and rushed for more than 1,100 yards and a combined 29 touchdowns. What I see on his film is kind of similar to what we see. A lot of young guys trying to fill roles that uh, some are ready for and some, you know, some are not. And uh, the key for us and, and them is is that see who's going to get older quicker in the game and uh, see who's going to get that who's going to get that big W. It's the same story on the defensive side of the ball. McGoffin County lost three of their top four tacklers, while Betsy Lane said goodbye to more than 300 tackles. With both teams as young as they are, both coaches have tried different techniques to get that first win of the season. I've, I've threw out quite a few playbooks. Uh, each team that I've had the last few years are different. So, I mean, I've had to uh, try to find a team or find a playbook that fits this team, and hopefully I found one that these guys like. And You know, last week I questioned them a little bit, and, and, and I told them that. I, I, are they happy with losing? And I don't think they are, um, and, and at least I hope they're not. Uh, if, if they get to that point, then, you know, we're, we're going back to the old McGuffin County. And, and we've worked so hard to, to get where we're at, and we don't want to uh, diminish that. Both teams have seen success over the past few seasons and look to get back to their winning ways on Friday night. In McGuffin County, Lauren Cash, WYMT Mountain Sports.